I'm Scott Owl Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. One of the most important things in moving to a new country for most people, because you're going to be either looking to save money, maybe you need some flexibility, or just you haven't had time to acquire a vehicle yet. When you move to a new country, public transportation is a really important aspect of how life is going to be there. Coming from North America, you may not think about this as commonly as people in the rest of the world do, but to most of the world, public transportation is a very important aspect of life. And here in Nicaragua, it is no different. And I get a lot of questions about what public transportation is like here. So I'm gonna do a little bit today and I have an upcoming episode as well, which we've already partially recorded uh, that I want to share some of the public transportation here with you. And today we're gonna do this as a kind of a miscellaneous episode. We have a couple other topics. I have some old footage that's been sitting around that I want to cover as well just because it hasn't made it onto the show. So we're going to show a little bit of a parade that was here in uh, Leon not too long ago. We're going to do a little bit on food and a completely unrelated segment on something on BuzzFeed. So we have something different for everyone on today's show, which we will get to that right after the bar. Here in Nicaragua, we are lacking in trains. Uh, we've been told that they're coming and I'm very hopeful. We've had trains in the past, but we don't have any currently. The entire region is essentially trainless. It's not 100% true, but by and large, Costa Rica has a very small amount. Panama has a little bit less, but the rest of us basically don't have any trains yet. But Nicaragua is working on that and I am extremely excited and hopeful uh, about the entire thing. I love trains and I live in a part of the country that in theory is going to be serviced by them. We're not in the guaranteed area. We're in the theoretical area, unlike Granada. This is one of the reasons we get angry with the people in Granada. They are definitely getting a train. They also got a ferry. We don't have a ferry. We also don't have a lake, so I, I guess we'll give them that one. Anyway, one of the most important things over the last couple years that has happened here in Nicaragua is that new buses have been coming into the country. And this sounds like one of the most boring or pedantic things to someone who's not from the region, but if you live down here, you start to realize that one, public transportation is a really big deal, and buses are the primary form of public transportation that you're going to use, or something like buses. It could be shuttles, it could be the rutas, but other than taxis, buses do the majority of the movement of people around the country because we don't have trains, we don't have trams, we don't have a cableway, we don't have landscapes that really uh, work well for any of those things. So buses are the name of the game here in Nicaragua. And with all these new buses, it's completely changed things because like many Latin American countries, for a long time, Nicaragua may do with very old buses, whether they were purchased new or purchased used, but they were just kept in service for a really long time. And this made them dingy, it made them old fashioned, it made them not very fuel efficient, they were loud, a lot of people didn't like them, they weren't particularly comfortable, and so, but people use them all the time. They commute to work on them, they travel to see family members on them, and of course, not every bus in the country has been replaced, and the ones I show most often are actually shuttles, that's the interlocales, or the UCA buses, uh, as we call them. Those are still the basically uh, Toyota or Nissan or similar uh, cargo vans or large uh, extended vans that are uh, converted to 15 to 17 passenger. They're pretty comfy, those are pretty much staying as they are, it is the big thing that's really changing is the city buses. And we've talked about this a bit on the channel and we've shown on the outside a little bit here on the channel and people have seen them on the news. So I've gotten asked about them because at both domestically and abroad, people have talked about just how many new buses have come into the country. It's a major infrastructure investment for the country because it is it's improving real lifestyles. Um, and that's something that if you were in uh, North America and someone said, well, we got a thousand new buses, people would be like, well, that's that's nice and all, but who's that really impacting? Yes, the people who are commuting on it have a slightly better commute, but does it really matter? Here, it's a bit different. This is a significant upgrade to people's real lives to a great percentage of the population. So it's a much bigger deal than people are going to realize to the point where when the buses were paraded from the port to the capital to move them, people lined up on the roads, they took pictures, it was headline news, News, like really big deal and we have some footage of uh, a recent acquisition because there's new buses that came in since I recorded the buses on this episode uh, right here in Leon. Two big shipments came in, one from Russia, one from China. Well, actually, a group of them from China. There were so many, came on multiple ships, but two basic groups of buses that I'm aware of. Here in Leon, we got some of the first ones because our buses were some of the oldest and definitely needed to be replaced. And we got these new Russian buses, which I showed about a year ago from the outside. I walked by, let you see in the windows. 
but we're gonna show you a bit more. So we're gonna take you just, we're gonna go from a bus stop out here in Sutiyava, get right on the bus and ride it just a little ways so you guys can see what it's like getting on the bus. This is in the middle of the day, so we are nice, nice and bright, but it's not completely packed. During commuting hours, it's gonna be very full. One of the great things about this is it costs six cords. That's roughly 16 cents US in order to ride the bus. This is pocket change even for a Nicaraguan. So it's very, very cheap. And it's it's like basically two coins. You have a five cord coin and a one cord coin. And you just hand that to them when you get on the bus and it goes anywhere on the route. You can ride for that six cord or 16 cents. So it's very cost effective. These are also quite safe. Now be aware, someone might pick your pockets. That kind of stuff could happen, but it's not gonna be violent. No one's gonna grab things out of your hand but you know if you leave something on the seat you're not paying attention of course you, you just be aware it's a public transportation system you don't know who's on the bus be a little bit cautious but in general you really don't even have to worry about that too often that's that's the rarity uh, and if this bus is very empty but other buses if you see them more full people are using their phones people are playing video games people are distracted and have their stuff laying about it, they're not actually that worried because they really are just normal commuters riding it's very safe and definitely from a pure safety perspective these are completely safe and unlike American buses uh, they use an actual person that monitors for um, people paying and everything so there's there's the driver but there's also another person who's always on these buses walking around uh, and that person um, does act as a security person it's not really their role but they do certainly do that they're more there to make sure that people are paying or know what to do so if you get onto one of these buses and you're confused that guy walking around is totally gonna help you out give him his have you know a 10 cord note on you and be prepared to hand that to him and he'll take care of getting you change if it goes up in price and you don't know, you'll be covered, whatever. Very easy, don't feel it's gonna be a nervous thing to get on the bus. It's not, I've, I've ridden buses in a lot of countries and I'm often like, what do I do? This doesn't feel that way. Get onto one of these buses, have a little bit of money ready. The guy will come and take it. it. You know, if you know what you're doing, you can just go do the thing, but he'll just take it and just ride it wherever you want to go. The one thing that's complicated is learning how to identify which bus goes to which place. So if you're on a route where someone tells you what to do, you're all set. But if you're going to be riding all over the city, uh, it's going to get a little bit more complicated and we're going to have to cover that in future episodes. But I wanted to be able to show the bus because people have been asking about this and I think it is nice for people to see because we get so many comments where people just in general, right? Coming from America, we hate buses. We're so used to buses being this awful thing you don't want to ride, even when they actually are pretty nice. In some circumstances, here in Nicaragua, they can be really nice, but the comments we get are often like, oh, the buses must be awful. I can't imagine riding that. Very comfortable, very clean, very safe, beautiful buses. And uh, I actually did, some of you saw, an interview where we actually recorded on the bus. We had a, a live stream out of the back of a bus. We rode in the back seat and got interviewed as we went through the city uh, and then went and did some other things. But it was really cool that we did an interview on the buses and people were like watching and it was very neat to be able to do that. Uh, so that's going to be coming up in a future episode, probably within about a week. So be looking for that. You'll see a little bit more of riding the bus. You'll actually see a pull up and us get on live. And uh, uh, I have a different footage than I'll link the actual live stream. Mine is uh, an edited one from my own camera. So it gives you a different feel of the same interview. All right, we're going to move on to topic two. We have this kind of miscellaneous episode today, which I like doing. It's nice to clean up some of my old footage because sometimes I get like events or we do something and I don't have enough that really makes sense to make a dedicated episode. And then I kind of lose track of what I'm doing. And I'm like, what am I going to do with this footage? And uh, I want to put it together for you. So in yesterday's episode, and honestly, I did mean to use some of this footage yesterday and I totally spaced out, published the episode and then realized I hadn't used it. But it reminded me to come back and do this. So you're going to get to see it just imagine me artistically putting this over top of some of the discussion yesterday and then just imagine the show is better than it is and uh, so just recently probably about a month ago I was out uh, and heard at the very last second that a parade was going on and starting from uh, uh, Fonseca in the southeast part of the city and so I ran out there parked ran through the streets and, and partially, I'm still learning how to do uh, on-the-fly recording with my Fuji system. So I ran out with it. Was, this was a chance to play around with a good camera and, uh, and get some people. But this was a uh, parade. Now, we mentioned yesterday that there's a lot of uh, different types of events that happen around the country. So this one is what we would call one of the political parades. This was just, you know, a political party getting out and having a party and showing support. There's no event. There's no particular purpose. Uh, these happen on a regular basis. They're super fun. Good Good music. You're, everyone's welcome to come out. Do not have any fear of coming out to one of these. And you can see how people are visibly reacting. So in case it's not obvious, I am a super 
obvious gringo standing on the side of the road with a camera. Now, obviously with a camera, that makes some people really excited because they're on camera and other people nervous because they're on camera, right? That's just generally how it is. Some people don't really like being on camera. Watch the people. Everyone wants to wave. Everyone wants to smile. Everyone wants to get on camera. Like this is a, this is a group of people having a lot of fun uh, and, and just, you know, seeing uh, a, a, an obvious American or Canadian standing on the side and, and participating and like being involved and, and, you know, witnessing what they're doing gets people happy and excited because they, you know, they're, they're getting exactly what's the purpose of a parade to show their support, to show their excitement, to show that they're happy. And that's, that's exactly what you see. So, uh, this is the kind of reaction you would expect if you went to these events. Um, and I've seen this when I lived in the middle of the city, people will come by, you lean out the windows of your house in the middle of a city and the same thing, people see you and they're like, yeah, they're excited that people are watching the parade. Uh, and, and so absolutely have no fear, no qualms about going out and uh, and just being an observer. I mean, that's that's why these things are here. No one's putting on a public event without the intention of you getting to observe and and even participate. So so feel free to to go plop down a spot on the side of the road. This was the start of the parade. So this is a little bit of an awkward spot to go watch. So I'm I'm like standing there as they line up and go. Like you're totally okay doing that. Just it's not a good place to witness the parade. You want to be midway along the route. So you're seeing people as they've like warmed up. They got a routine. They're moving along and less of them staging. I had to park where I was able to park and I was coming from a long way away and I had gotten there after the parade had already started. So but I think it's some some cool footage and, and looks really nice. Um, and I'm hoping to be able to go out with that camera a lot more. It's fun to go out. Um, and film with that. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that and it gives you a little bit of taste of, of what those kinds of parades look like. We don't often get to film those just because they're, they're less on the schedule or we're not announced to us so much. Uh, so we don't know when they're gonna happen. And now where I live, we don't hear them coming. So I can't just run out and film them like I used to be able to. Uh, we did have, I honestly don't remember if we've run this segment. I have on my hard drive, as if I didn't run this segment, this uh, information about some new vegetarian food that has shown up in the Capitol. So take it away, Scott. Okay. This is super exciting for us vegetarians who live here in Nicaragua because... You may know that Burger King has had the Impossible Whopper in the United States for some time, and it's quite good, and it's one of the things we love eating when we're in the United States. We have had the Burger King Veggie Whoppers here, but they are different. They're actually, we think, better in most cases. I like, they're different, right? We have a Polish one here. We've had that for some time, and I think it's been pretty successful, but that's the only thing we've had. When we visit Costa Rica, we were able to, for a little while, get some vegetarian chicken products in uh, Costa Rica, and we loved them. They were so good. We were so excited. So we used to go to Burger King in Costa Rica specifically to get them. And then they took them off the market. And we were really disappointed because they did such a good job. They were so good. Uh, and they just didn't exist. And then when we went to the United States, we were really hopeful that the U.S. would have them. And I have checked in uh, El Salvador. I've checked in Guatemala. I've checked in the United States. And uh, even some of them don't have even the veggie whopper, let alone the chicken products. I have seen nothing of chicken products anywhere except for Costa Rica until today, our Burger Kings here in Nicaragua now have not just the Veggie Whopper, but their veggie chicken products as well, which include their ch veggie chicken nuggets. I guess I go out of the light when I do that. I'll do my best to get it in the focus. I don't know if you can see it. These are, these are quite good, but the piece de resistance is their chicken sandwich. And back when I used to work as a manager at Burger King, this is one of my favorite items on the Burger King menu. This is my favorite of their veggie items. I do like their veggie Whopper a lot, but this is their veggie chicken sandwich. I'm so excited that we're able to get this. I hope it is not just a trial. We'll be eating at Burger King more often. Now we have to drive to Managua. We don't have one here in Leon. So this is my wife just came back from Managua and brought this for me. And I'm so excited that we're able to have this. This is a big thing for, for people who are vegetarian or just looking for a variety of food uh, here in Nicaragua. Burger King is kind of our leader in American imported or American style imported vegetarian options because even in the U.S. you can't get this much. Mm. I'm very excited, as you can tell, about the new food from Burger King. All right, my final segment, I saw this on BuzzFeed, it drove me crazy, and I had to make a recording of it for you guys, so I'm just tacking it on at the end here. Feel free to skip this. If you want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Be sure to post links to share on social media, tell a friend about the show, and uh, in case you're not watching the rest of this, it is a little bit funny, so, so go ahead and watch it, but uh, I will see the rest of you <laughs> tomorrow. 
And if you're hanging around, let's go watch this last segment where I rant about what younger people think of boomers because they, they have no idea what boomers are. Uh, and then uh, we'll wrap it up from there. All right, I, I have to talk about this article that came from BuzzFeed because this is so annoying how dumb this is because there's no person in the universe young enough that should ever make these mistakes, but this annoyed me so much, I, I have to put it on the show. So here's the BuzzFeed topic. You're officially a boomer. That means people who are over about 59 to 60 this year and older. If you've done half of these 40 things, unless you lie and say you did, uh, and then it says, the more you check off this list, the more likely you are to be over 65. Okay, so boomers, people who are over 65 today. I'm 48. I am at the youngest end of Gen X, the generation that comes after the boomers. My wife is two years younger than me. She is, she grew up in an area that kind of makes her like Gen X, but she's technically in the years of Gen Y or millennials. My eldest daughter, Liesl, is a Gen Zer at the young age of Gen Z, and my youngest daughter, Luciana, is at the very oldest ages of Gen Alpha. So none of us are boomers. None of us are close to boomers. I am just one year short of being an entire generation short of being boomers. Let's go through the list. Have you ever drank Coca-Cola out of a glass bottle? Yeah, of course, because Coca-Cola ships currently in glass bottles. My youngest daughter, my, everybody in my family, little children here, drink Coca-Cola out of glass bottles. Even in the United States, Coca-Cola, when it's made with sugar, comes in a glass bottle. So that has nothing to do with being a boomer. Have you ever sung the I'd like to buy the world a Coke jingle? This one, okay, I'll give you a little bit. Not something you've heard anywhere recently. Have you ever bought or gone into a bathroom that had colored toilet paper? This has to do with how old the people whose bathrooms you're going into because they still make this. It's not very common, but it's still out there. It's definitely not a boomer thing. It was not even an Gen X thing. It was more of a millennial thing. Have you ever watched a movie at a drive-in theater? Uh, obviously, because they're still active. And I grew up, like my kids have been to drive-in theaters. My Gen Alpha, four generations younger than what this is about. Babies still go to drive-in theaters. We still have them. They still have them in Texas. We they still have them in New York. They still have them here in Central America. The whole world has drive-in theaters. The idea that you will sit in your car and watch a movie has not gone away. I realize it was more popular with boomers, but we all go to it. Have you ever made quick when it came in a tin can? Again, this was common at least all through the Gen X and all through the Gen Y years, very likely into Gen Z. I'm not aware of anyone still shipping quick in a tin can, but it did for a very long time. Have you ever used a Brannock device? One of those things that measures, measures your feet. Again, yes, they still use those today. That is current. I can go down to the market and see one. Have you ever used Aquanet? Okay, I don't know because I've never needed to use Aquanet, but I bet they still sell that. Uh, have you ever eaten at a Howard Johnson's restaurant? This one, again, okay, they started going away, but they were around for Gen Z. My wife and I, had our first meal at a Howard Johnson. Again, she's in the millennial years. I'm in the Gen X years. Howard Johnson's were still around for years after that. So by the time that my Gen Z daughter was born, Howard Johnson's were still something you would eat at. Again, this makes no sense. Have you ever gotten or sent a fax? Well, as someone who runs a company that, that does faxing, we don't promote it, but we certainly send faxes. This is something that's still done today. We still have new customers every day who need to send faxes or deal with faxes. This is a current thing today. So if you're breathing today, you may have had this happen. Have you ever used a photocopier? I have one in my house. Again, there's no boomer here, right? This is just everybody uses copiers. Not so often, but if, if, like, have you ever heard of someone who needs to make a copy of their passport, copy of your social security card, copy of your driver's license? I have to use photocopiers all the time. We're required to use photocopiers for all kinds of tasks that we do. And there's photocopy shops that are open down the street. People go there so they can make copies of things because not everyone has a printer at home anymore. We had to make so many copies, we bought a copier for home. And that was the end of the list. Not a single thing on the list clearly has even the slightest hint of being connected to Boomer, except maybe, maybe the I'd like to buy the world a Coke song, but that certainly at least goes into other generations commonly that we had it all the time. Nothing from that list. Whoever made that list has no concept of when the 65 year olds were alive and when other people were alive. Like 
<laughs> it would be like saying, have you ever used a compact disc? You must be from the 1800s, right? That's completely, like, I was just really frustrated. My younger audience is going to be like, those aren't boomer things, really. And everyone who's at least 35 is going to be like, um, what are they talking about? They're on drugs. Yeah. So definitely, it does. I don't know what those lists are. I mean, those are pretty silly lists, right? It's kind of like the old uh, Cosmopolitan magazine and there's, there's stupid tests in there. It's just some intern slapping things together. They don't know and they don't care. And there's no editorial, uh, uh, you know, um, oversight or anything. It, but still. I had to I had to rant about that. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I'll see all of you tomorrow.